In this video, you're going to learn how to convert from the standard form of a quadratic into the vertex form of a quadratic using two different methods. So sometimes this is learned in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 or College Algebra or even Pre-Calculus, and it's approached different ways. So let me show you the couple, two popular ways of doing it. The first way is to find the x-coordinate of the vertex by using this formula, negative b over 2a. The other method we're going to use is completing the square. And just a refresher, this is the vertex form. The standard form that we're being given is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and we're converting it into this vertex form. So we're gonna go through two examples. I'll do the first one, see if you can do the second one, and let's get some practice. So the first thing we notice is that our a is negative three, our b is negative 12, and our c is equal to one. So if we use this negative b over 2a formula to find the x coordinate of our vertex, that's gonna be negative b, so negative times negative 12, over two times a, so two times negative three. That comes out to 12 over negative six, which is equal to negative two. Now this negative two is the x coordinate of our vertex. To find the y coordinate, we have to plug it back in for x and simplify. So let's go ahead and do that. We have y equals negative three times negative two squared, minus 12 times negative two plus one. Remember to follow your order of operations. So parentheses first, negative two squared is four, times negative three is negative 12, and negative 12 times negative two is positive 24. So this comes out to positive 12 plus one is 13. So that's our y coordinate of our vertex. In our vertex form, the vertex is this h and this k right here. So what we have is, y equals a, which is negative three, times x minus the x coordinate of the vertex, so x minus negative two is gonna be x plus two, those two negatives cancel, squared plus 13. So one thing to notice is that this number that's grouped with the x, it actually has the opposite effect on the graph. The plus two will shift the graph left two. You can see your vertex is at negative two, so the signs are gonna be the opposite. The k value, the y coordinate of the vertex, they're gonna be the same. So that's using the negative b over 2a. How do we do it by completing the square, right, Mario? Well, let's see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our equation here. I'm gonna subtract the one to the other side just to kind of get it out of the way. So that's kind of like our first step. The next step is we're gonna factor out this a value, this leading coefficient. So if I factor out negative three, that's gonna be x squared plus four x. Now, remember, when you're factoring out a negative three, it's kind of like dividing everything by negative three. So that's how I'm getting this four x here. Now, to complete the square, what you want to do is you want to take half of the b value here and square it. So half of this middle coefficient squared. So half of four is two. Two squared is four. I'm adding four out of thin air, right? But it's actually negative three times four, since this is in parentheses. So that's actually like negative 12 I'm adding to the right side of the equation out of thin air. So to counterbalance that, I'm gonna to have to add a negative 12 to the other side to keep it balanced, right? So that comes out to y minus 13 equals negative three. Now this is a perfect square. I'm gonna factor it as x plus two, the quantity squared. One thing you'll notice is that when you're completing the square, when you go to write this in factored form, this is always, this number right here is always gonna be half of this middle coefficient. So if this was minus four x, this would be minus two. Or if this was 20 x, it'd be plus 10, it's always gonna be half. And then the last step is let's go ahead and add the 13 to get the y by itself to the other side. So that's gonna be negative three times x plus two squared plus 13. So all I did was just add 13 to both sides to get the y by itself. Now you can see we're getting the exact same equation that we got right here. It's just that we did it using the completing the square method. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Okay, see if you can do this next problem on your own using the two different methods, the negative b over 2a and the completing the square method. So how would you do those? If I was gonna do it, starting with the negative b over 2a, I would say the x coordinate of our vertex is negative four over two times one half. So that comes out to negative four over one, which is negative four. Now that's the x coordinate of our vertex. To find the y coordinate, I'm gonna plug it back in and simplify to solve for y. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got one half times negative four squared 
plus 4 times negative 4 plus 5. So let's see, that comes out to 16 times a half is 8 plus negative 16 plus 5. So that's negative 8 plus 5, which is negative 3. Okay, so now that's our vertex. We know our a value is 1 half, so let's go ahead and put it into this vertex form. So we've got y equals 1 half x minus negative 4, which is like x plus 4 squared minus 3, and now we've got it in the vertex form. Let's do the same problem, but let's do it using the completing the square method. So what I would do here, first step, is I would subtract the 5 over to the other side just to get that constant out of the way. Then what you want to do is you want to factor out this leading coefficient, this a value. Not, you don't want to do the greatest common factor. Sometimes people mistakenly factor out like a 1 half x or something like that. You just want to factor out the a value. So that becomes x squared plus 8x. And sometimes students make a little mistake here. You might want to check your work by distributing. 1 half times 8x gives you back the 4x, or 1 half times x squared gives you back the 1 half x squared, just to see if you're on the right track. Now we want to complete the square. We take half of this b value and we square it. So half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. But it's actually a half times 16 that we're adding to the right side of the equation, which is 8. So if we add 8 to the right side, we have to add 8 to the left side. So now we have y plus 3. Now what we're going to do is we're going to factor this trinomial. It's a perfect square. And remember that little trick we mentioned. It's always going to be half of this b value. So this is going to be x plus 4, the quantity squared. If this was minus 8x, it would be minus 4. And then the last step here is I'm going to just subtract 3 to the other side to get y by itself. So this is going to be a negative 3. And you've got that y by itself. It's in the vertex form. And you can see these two match. So kind of depends on where you're at in math, what your class is, or you know, which way your teacher prefers you do it. But you'll get the same answer in the end. Good to know this completing the square technique. If this was a little challenging, follow me over to that video I did right there talking more about how to complete the square Get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.